the divine mercy, the divine love of God for humanity. Dear friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, in this season of Easter, having celebrated the resurrection of the Lord, where he gave new life to us and saved us and made us new creatures and renewed our dignity, today, one week after the resurrection, the second Sunday of Easter, we celebrate the divine mercy. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins, to elevate us there where we had fallen. Thank you, Lord God, for the mercy and the love you have for your people who, had, who were lost because of sin. And thank you, Lord, for bringing new life we who had met death, you gave us life forever. And today we celebrate your mercy, your tenderness, your kindness, your compassion. Thank you, Lord, for being so kind and compassionate to us. Help us to be compassionate to each other. This devotion of the divine mercy spread, especially through the person of, of St. Maria. Faustina Kowalska from Poland, who received several visions from the Lord himself, who spoke to her. And we see this image with one hand raised up, blessing you and me, and inviting you and me to be a blessing to the people that we meet, to be a blessing in the sense that we are invited to speak well of others, to do well to others, and to be well and good to others. So the Lord is blessing us so much with especially showering us with his mercy so that we too can bless others so much showering them with the mercy and blessings and forgiveness and love without limit God loves and forgives us with his mercy so much without limit, without counting the cost so that we too, learning from his heart, can be able to shower others with blessings continue being a blessing in your family in your community, in the society, wherever you are to work, even on our journey of life be a blessing. Speak well of others. Do well to others. Keep making life easier for all. Just as Jesus came also to make our life easier so that we can have life abundantly and to the full. One image that also, one characteristic of this image, apart from the hand blessing, is the hand that is on the breast, on the chest. Meaning it's from the heart of Jesus that we, each one of us are in the heart of Jesus. So from the heart of Jesus, that divine heart, the heart of God, is there rays flowing and reaching to you and me? Rays, rays of love from Jesus' heart to your heart, to my heart, so that we too, from our own hearts, we can have rays that radiate and reach others and heal others and share and shower others with love, with forgiveness, with tenderness, because from the heart. We have the sentiments of love, of healing, the heart we love, in the heart we forgive, there is tenderness. So we are showered with these rays. The rays put our hearts on fire, the rays from Jesus, they reach the whole world, that's why you see them moving through the whole world, so that we too are all, the whole world is set on fire with love, to love as God loves, and to forgive as God forgives, and to share this love abundantly, and this forgiveness to all abundantly as God loves and forgives us all. So the heart is, the hand is on the heart, and from the heart, God is blessing you and us. And from the heart, he's inviting us to bless others from the heart, to speak well of others from the heart. These rays are like pale or white and red. And the white color means the, hum the humanity. It's like water symbolizing the baptism, which we are become members of the family. We are washed in order to be to go and wash and make others clean. The water is also a symbol of life. So we see from the heart of Jesus, there is life flowing in the white rays, which is like water, showering all of us and giving life, inviting us that wherever we are, we, we are invited to shower others with rays of life, 
of life to others and to wash each other and to make each other a family. So the sacrament of baptism is highlighted also with this divine white light. And then we see the red color, which is a symbol of life, of covenant, the relationship that we human beings have with God. We have a tight bond, a tight covenant, a tight relationship, a close relationship with God who created us in his own image and likeness. A kind of ownership. God owns us thanks to the baptism, thanks to the blood showered on the whole world through Jesus himself. Jesus takes upon himself with his own blood poured out to give life to others. Just as the blood of the lambs, which were healed, which were killed to sacrifice, and the, this blood kind of atoned for the sins, and it was sacrificed many times. Here, Jesus showers and pours His own blood to each one of us, giving new life to us, atoning for our sins. He takes upon Himself everything, our sins, our worries, our nothingness, and makes us whole, complete, healed again. Thank you, Lord, for showering your blood and pouring it out so that we can be healed, we can have new life. We were merited death that we can have new life. So we too are invited to shower others to sacrifice as Jesus sacrificed, to give our whole life to others, to give our whole time to others, our whole gifts to others, so that others can live. Husband and wife, do you give life to each other? Do you give life to your parents, to your children around, to the family around? As friends, we give life to each other. Do we, and in giving life, there are sacrifices involved. There are inconvenient moments that are involved. Yet we know that with such sacrifices, we give life to others. In sacrifices, there are toils. People sweat. Yet we know by sweating, we give life to others. We uplift each other. Help one to be uplifted. Give life to one, to many people, beginning from our families. Today, my brother, my sister, and give life through the sacrifices. Don't be afraid of the sacrifices. Our life is full of sacrifices. We embrace the sacrifice of the cross of Jesus, and we sacrifice out of love. We go through pains and challenges out of love. We are go through uncomfortable, uncomfortable situations out of love. So the Lord showers us with this life so that we can shower others with the life and love that comes from him. This image as we sit down there, it is Jesus, I trust in you. This is how St. Maria Faustina was told, that it depicts this image and Jesus is not going, who was giving her instructions of every detail of this image until even Jesus was satisfied that yes, this is how I want my image to be. And the words down are, Jesus, I trust in you. So dear friends, as we do the best we can, the Lord invites us to trust in him, to entrust everything in his hands, to entrust our lives into his hands, to do the best we can, but to do always, to leave everything in God's hands. And then we will see miracles. Then we will know that we are never alone. This is the divine mass. We celebrate the mercy of the Lord. God loves us so much that he does not want each one of us to get lost. He searches for us. He leaves the 99 and goes to look for the one which is lost. He wants us all to be saved and to be one, to enjoy the benefits of the Father, to enjoy the benefits of being in one family. With the divine mercy, God shows compassion. He looks down on us and sees how unlimited we are, how sinful we are, and he wants to uplift us, and he uplifts us through Jesus Christ, our Son, so that we can enjoy the happiness forever with him. Another characteristic of this image is the dark background. That, that is, means that God shines out. Jesus shines out in the darkness. There is no dark moment that overpowers. He overpowers the darkness and invites us that to receive those rays from the Lord, to be good inside, so that in the dark moments of our lives, we can shine out as victorious people because we have Christ and His Spirit shining in us and reaching out with others. God showers us with His mercy so that we can also go out and reach out and shower others with 
mercy that we have received with the forgiveness, the tenderness, the love that we have received from him. Dear friends, we get inspiration from today's gospel of uh, John chapter 20 verses 19 to 29. We see the risen Christ, Prince of Peace, bringing peace appearing in the upper room and bringing peace through the sacrament of reconciliation, of forgiveness, of showering us with God's mercy, of repentance, of confession, of reconciliation that, that came as a result of Jesus' passion, death and resurrection on the cross which led to the piercing of his heart where water and blood showered to give us new life. So beautiful that from the heart of Jesus, life is given, mercy, forgiveness is given and showered to us. Too much of it. We do not deserve it. We are sinners. We are limited. We do not deserve the mercy and forgiveness and closeness of the Lord. But the Lord loves us and forgives us and shows his mercy to us even when we do not deserve it. We don't need to do anything. God showers us with mercy. Of course, in our lives, we are invited to live good, healthy lives, to reconcile ourselves, to be, to confess in order to enjoy the benefits of the peace, of the love, of the serenity that God brings. But as we do the best to bring, to enjoy those, that peace, we have to keep in mind that God's mercy and love is free of charge. He showers us as we wishes, as he wishes. It's too much. We do not deserve it. We don't do anything in order to get it. Yet, in order to enjoy it more, we need to repent, to reconcile, to ask for forgiveness through the sacrament of reconciliation, to find peace so as to enjoy life with God, with ourselves, and with each other, which only comes with the sacrament of reconciliation of peace. When we make peace with God, with others, and with ourselves through confession. So therefore, dear friends, in the Gospel of John chapter 20, the disciples are locked up in fear. You know, their master is, was dead and he, they, used to be, they used to be strong because of Jesus and now Jesus physically is not with them. So they are fearing. They feel like, ah, the way they killed Jesus, now they are looking for who was with, with Jesus. They are looking for us and they are fearful and they are locked out in bars. They are closed in and closed out. They are fearful. This is so serious, dear friends. The disciples are locked up. They are closed in. And they will never change the world if they remain locked up in their doors, in their hearts. They will never spread the good news if they remain locked up in their hearts, in their lives. Maybe we too are locked up. Maybe we too are closed in our hearts. Maybe we, too, maybe we too are fearful, but we will never spread good news if we remain always in the fear and locked up in ourselves, closed in ourselves. We never talk out anything, we just keep quiet. Good things happen, we keep quiet. Bad things happen, we keep quiet. That is dangerous. Open up. Look, we have the Spirit in us and the Spirit is active. Open up and be good news. Speak good news. Encourage someone today. And they are locked up. That's how we spread good news with our lives, but also with our good words. Open up. Be open. Open out and move. This the Spirit moves us to be good news, to spread good news to all. And as they are locked up, or as we are locked up, Jesus comes to them in their midst. He stands in their midst of their fears, of their challenges, of their worries, of their fears. My brother, my sister, what worries do you have? The Lord is there coming to, to stand in your midst, to turn your worries into blessings. Open up your heart and allow the Lord to continue working to, through you to others. Allow the Lord to work to you through others who are nearby. There are many, the Lord is speaking to you and me through many people around us, through many situations around us. Open up. Allow him to continue speaking to you and me. Open up your heart. The locks on the door could not stop Jesus from coming. 
They could not stop him because he is a powerful Lord. He can appear anywhere. He can appear even in your heart. In your situation which seems to be difficult, the Lord is seeing your heart, my heart. And he's appearing there, standing in the midst of your heart, of my heart, in our lives, in our situation. However bad it is, the Lord is standing there and working out everything for our good through us and through our brothers and sisters. He's standing. And standing is a sign of victory. We have a victorious God who is standing and ready for action and invites us not to stay and closed up in ourselves, but to move out, to stand and share the life, the victory of life of Christ with others. My brother, my sister, use your hands, your legs to go and spread good news always and everywhere, wherever we are. That is our mission. And spread good news here and now, right now. As long as the Lord gives us energy and strength and wisdom, use this opportunity to spread the good news, beginning with your husband and your wife, with your children, and with the rest of the community and the rest of the world. Spread good news here and now. Allow the Spirit of the Lord in your heart, in my heart, to move us, to go and do good to others, so that that good can continue spreading and permeating like fire, like the fire of love that is working through our hearts to reach others' hearts and lives. We could ask ourselves, are we, are you locked up in your fears, in your worries, in your anxieties, and you have allowed these negative things to overpower you, to possess you? Oh, you allow the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord to continue working out through us, to overcome these fears, many of which just come and go. What are your fears? What are you fearing at this moment? The Lord is here today to free us as he did with the disciples, to strengthen us, to show us the way, to walk with us and guide us and show us the way towards himself and towards each other and towards ourselves too. Are there some things in my heart, in your heart, that are going on, in, that are negative, that are blocking us from living out our mission and our calling to the full and enjoying our calling in the family, in the religious life, in any form of life? Are there some things that are blocking us, that are out of fear, they are blocking us and we cannot live our life to the full with passion and with love and with enthusiasm? Who are there those things? The Lord is today saying, kick them off and allow the Lord to take possession of ourselves so that the Lord can, so that everyone who speaks is a good word that the Lord is speaking through us. Every action we do is a good Lord doing for the good of others and uplifting others. Are you blocked from being that generous person you used to be, from being that good mother, that good father, that good brother, good sister, that good friend that you used to be? Change, allow the Lord to change your heart so that you continue being that good person that you used to be or that good person that you are called to be in life. Just know that amidst your fears, your challenges, and whatever that is going through you, Jesus is coming and he comes to through you with his mercy, with his love, with his forgiveness, tenderness, and generosity. And he invites you and me to be mercy for others, to be forgiveness for others, to be tenderness for others, to feel with others, to be compassionate, to feel with those who are suffering, and to feel with those who are rejoicing. He invites you and me to show mercy, forgiveness without limit to others, here and now. Is there a person that I am finding difficult to forgive? The Lord says, allow yourself to be moved because that's the only way that will free me and will free the other person whom I'm finding difficult to forgive. Be at peace now. Others are hurting us because they have their own problems, they have their own struggles. All of us have our own struggles. That's why we have to have a heart that forgives, that shows mercy, that shows compassion to our brothers and sisters, especially if they keep wronging us. Mercy is where God's love meets your pain, your disappointments, your fear. And God wants to show you this mercy, this love, so that you too can share this love and mercy to others that we meet on our journey of life. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord, and the Lord Jesus told them, Peace be with you. The Lord gives us peace so that we can be peace for others. We can share this peace with others. So, dear friends, you see, there's a movement from fear that makes you feel nothing and do nothing to peace, which makes you feel someone and do everything. 
Jesus continues and says, the Father has sent me, so I send you. The Lord sends us. We do not send ourselves. He sends us to be ambassadors. His presence to others. Others are able to see Jesus through you, through me. To see Jesus' mercy and kindness through you, through me. To see the Father's love through me, through you. Be that mercy, that love of the Father towards everyone that you meet on your journey of life. And the Lord Jesus breathed on them again and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. The Lord, by breathing, gives life. His divine life is breathed on us, on the disciples and reaches all of us. And says, Receive the Holy Spirit. And He gives them the power from above that whatever sins that are forgiven on earth are forgiven in heaven. Whatever sins that are bound on earth, they are bound in heaven. That's where the confession, the sacrament of confession is a powerful, beautiful sacrament that frees us, that brings mercy close to us and that makes us happy and free when we confess our sins before God through the priest. And invites us the Lord to be that mercy, to embrace that mercy, that forgiveness, to receive it through the sacrament of reconciliation, to be peace for others, to be reconciled with God, with others, and with ourselves. Many times, the sin we experience is through fear, and the fear we experience is because we have sinned, because we have distanced ourselves from God, from others, and from ourselves. That's why we fear a lot. And the Lord says, don't hide your fear. Come out, bring out your fears, bring out your sins, and go and confess them to the Lord. And experience God's mercy, God's love, God's peace, God's compassion, so that you can share this compassion to others. We cannot share peace, love, care, and, and any form of tenderness to others if our heart is troubled and is in pieces. May Almighty God, dear friends, bless you as you continue being an instrument through which God's mercy, love, and, and, and tenderness and peace can reach others. May our way of thinking and doing every day be peaceful, be merciful, be loving, be caring towards others. May Almighty God, you once again, bless you and shower you with all his mercies from here, Jerusalem, to you and your hearts and your lives, that you may enjoy living out to the full that vocation that the Lord called you to be, that you may live it to the full and happily. May Almighty God bless you, dear friends, from Jerusalem. Blessings.